Welcome back to Intentionally Broke. My name's James Hayes. I've got a quick question for you. If you were earning $100,000 a year 10 years ago, would you be broke? Would you be in debt? That's the question we're going to be asking today while we're watching In Debt on a 1000k Salary Till Debt Do Us Part Without a Safety Net. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you've not yet subscribed. Smash the like button if you enjoy this type of content because it thoroughly helps out the channel. Let's get straight into the video. We got ourselves pretty heavily in debt. I used the debit card all the time. Nicola manages all of our finances. I took a stab at it early on in our relationship and... Things went wrong with our insurance, so I said forget it. She doesn't have a clear understanding of all of our expenses. Okay, if you were so bloody terrible at managing the finances, why do you think you've got to say here, mate? said forget it. She doesn't have a clear understanding of all of our expenses. She knows that I have a pretty good handle on it. When it... <laughs> She's saying the opposite. <laughs> oh. When it comes to sports, we'll dip into credit cards. We put them on an allowance for $100 a week. Why am I working so hard and I'm on such a tight budget? Where does all of our money go? My question is, if they're on this show, they're obviously doing very bad financially. Um, why is he suffering? If you're going to be shit with money, you might as well all be blowing money. You shouldn't be taking care of the finances. This woman should not be taking care of the finances, hoarding all the cash, wasting all this money, giving a husband no money to waste. It's either all or nothing. This looks like it's going to be a very complicated episode. I'm really excited to dive deep into it. But before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe and make sure to like this video because it really helps out the channel. I'm a sales representative for a software company. <laughs> he looks like a salesman, doesn't he? Nicola and I met when we were in high school. The whole high school sweetheart thing. Uh, I've been married to Mark for 11 years. Have... <laughs> Look, she looks fucking miserable. Look at her. She looks miserable. We've been married for 11 years. Three kids. Rebecca's 12, Jason's 10, Josh is 8. They're all into soccer and hockey. It's an active lifestyle. First of all, I'm a mother, but I do work as an educational assistant with special needs kids. Our family... That's a very uh, reputable job. Good for her. Our family income is 125000 a year. They're earning collectively 125000 Five thousand dollars a year. Even with kids, they should be fine, right? Instead of coming home and making ourselves some dinner, we'll go and pick up dinner somewhere. No fucking shit. We we knew this was coming. I bet they don't even have any food in their fridge. Because he makes about five times more than I do, it makes him feel bigger and more important. I make her. Oh, what an egotistical muppet! I make a reasonable amount of money, and I think that I should be able to enjoy it. I think his allowance really bugs him. A lot of times, I feel as though I have to go and ask permission, almost as a child would their parent, to do something when it comes to our money. I mean, if she is managing the money so well, an allowance. It doesn't seem to bother me too much. If my girlfriend did the same thing, wouldn't bother me if she's managing the money really well. However, they obviously aren't managing the money, so what's the point? What's the point? If I were to have to put a percentage around who's to blame as far as why we aren't saving money. Oh, who do you think, who do you think he's gonna blame? It's not the couple, is it? It's not the problem. Remember, there's this old saying, fix the problem, not the blame. You ain't gonna get nowhere by blaming this person and blaming that person. You both gotta take responsibility and tackle the problem together as a couple. The high percentage for Nicola, maybe 70, 80%. Oh, it's 70, 80% her fault. Um, it's also your fault for not communicating and not buckling down and fixing the problem. If something were to ever happen and I was unable to work, our whole life would come apart. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. If you keep living the YOLO lifestyle, if one of you loses your job or something like COVID-19 happens, you're absolutely stuffed, aren't you? You're really, really stuffed. I'm your boss, I'd love it if I could have an opportunity just to have a look around. Oh, it's, a, it's an absolutely lovely house. I like, I like how the staircase is there. It's really good. They've got a piano over there. The lighting, the, the fixtures and fittings of this property look incredible, especially for the time. Very modern. Now that is a nice kitchen, isn't it? Lots of food in the fridge. Oh, they've got food in the fridge. So they've got food in the fridge, yet they're going out all the fucking time. 
Doesn't seem to make sense to me. Let me know in the comments if you've worked it out. The boys' room looks lovely. Let's go see the basement. <laughs> Hockey is this family's passion. I have seen your tapes. And I have been through your finances with us. So this is the part of the show where Gal Van Zaksley goes through their finances, ask him how much they think they're spending, show him the real figures, and then we'll go from there. My favourite part of the show. Mark, you are very resentful. Financially, you don't feel like you have any control. You just bring home the dough, and then you're discounted completely. That's probably a fair assessment. Him being in an allowance... Is not okay if no one else is on an allowance. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's actually a really good point. That's a really, really good point. It's not fair. You are at once controlling and underappreciated. There's a sense that because you don't make as much as your husband does, that your value is less than his value. No, that's that's not right. That's not right at all. We all in relationships have different values. You might not be as valuable financially, but you might be more valuable around the house or or whatever the the deeds might be. If the kids were in childcare, it would cost this family about fifteen hundred dollars a month. Even though Nicola only earns about twenty four thousand dollars a year, because she's there with them all the time. She's saving this family about $42,000 a year in childcare costs. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. There's, there's all these hidden things a wife or a partner who doesn't work uh, brings to the table. I see three things that have to be fixed here. Oh, I wonder what these three things are going to be. But this reminds me of a friend of mine, Tony. I can't remember what his last name is. I haven't seen him for years. But many moons ago, he had a net worth of $3.8 million. Him and his wife broke up. His wife had never worked a day in her life. And she just stayed at home. She was a housemaker, right? When they broke up and got divorced, she wanted 50-50. And... I said to him at the time, you should, 60, 70% should, should go to her. Like, you're lucky she's not taking you for more. And he's like, no, this bitch ain't going to get any money of mine. She's not going to get any of my money. And he fought it tooth and nail. Until now, the last I heard, he's sleeping in his, in his mum's spare room. Absolutely disgusting. Ab there's there's different nuances to a relationship and a marriage when it comes to finance. It's not as black and white as I make more money, you make less money, blah, blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. Feel free to check this video. It's it's a video up here. I've got a video on this situation. You can check that out when uh, you're done with this one. There's three things that have to be fixed here. You need to get a sense of where the money's going. The second thing is, is that you need to communicate better. And the third thing is, is you have no savings. Oh, how the fuck do you not have any savings? He gets into a car accident tomorrow. Your whole family is up a creek without a paddle. I think the minimum is to have a three to six month worth of emergency fund. And if you want to blow your money after that, blow your money after that. But you should at least have a little bit of a safety net and then be reckless with your spending. But you are literally playing Russian roulette. Mark and Nicola are too busy spending in the present to save for the future. For big ticket items like sports fees, they end up using their credit and then spend months paying it back. And every time there's a game, there's also a trip to a fast food joint. Oh no, oh this is absolutely terrible. You went out for dinner on February 2nd. February 3rd, February 4th, February 7th, 9th, 11th. Twice you ate on the 14th. Three times out on the 21st. This aspect of your budget is way out of control. Seriously, how many broke people do you know who cry poor and they go out to eat more than three times a week? It seems like a self-inflicted issue to me, right? It's even more than I thought. Day-to-day -day spending can really add up. But this family also has some big annual expenses. Now, now let's talk about the day-to-day -day expenses. Now, people get really pissed off about finance people talking about saving money on your daily coffee or not going out to brunch or this, you know, this avocado on toast society or whatever, right? But here's the thing. When it comes to discretionary spending, like that coffee a day or that avocado on toast, that is the only part of your budget that you have 
full control over. Let's just say you have to have the internet, right? You have to have an internet connection. You can shop around, but you still have a bare minimum of spending, right? But when it comes to something as useless as avocado on toast or brunch or going out to eat, you have full control over that. You can eat at home. You can have instant coffee. It's just all about perspective. But if you're not focused on the future, you ain't going to be focused on anything. And here's the thing, the ones who are going to suffer, not only your children, it's going to be you in the future. You're going to have to rely on your children to take care of you financially. Do you want to be that much of a loser? You think you're spending about $5,000 a year on sports. Mm -hmm. In actuality, your sports costs are running at about 12. Whoa, 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 How in the world can you be so wrong? Now, this is one of the most important things about personal finances, is if you focus on the little things, there's this old saying, look after your cents and your dollars will look after themselves. I prefer thinking of it like this, look after your dollars and your cents will look after themselves. If you focus on where you're spending your money, you're going to be fine. If you put yourself on a but one of the worst things people could ever possibly think about is saying these words I'm about to say. Sorry, I can't afford it. I'm on a budget. No one wants to admit that. No one wants to admit that they're human, that they have to save money, that they have to invest money. But uh, I'm hoping you watching this video are better than this, that you can get on top of your finances or you stay on top of your finances and you have a long-term goal. One of the best things you can do financially is work out what your goal is. Is it to have a million dollars in your retirement account? Is it to save enough money for a house deposit? Is it enough money to buy... Uh, a car that you really want and pay cash for it. It's all these things that you've really got to focus on. And remember, building wealth isn't about looking forward to spending it. It's about getting the enjoyment of finding ways to spend money. Thanks very much for watching. Feel free to watch this video on screen now. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you like this type of content. Thank you very much for watching.